I moved around a lot after I was born. 14 houses, actually, and a lot of different schools. It's deceiving because sometimes they were all in the same district. Beverly Park Elementary for kindergarten, then on to Hilltop Elementary, from there to Cascade View, to North Hill Elementary, to Olympic Elementary, and then back to Hilltop. Then there was Rock Creek Elementary, to Homa Junior High School, Glacier Park, and that was all before high school. I don't think there was ever a housing transition I didn't want to make. There was always an exciting and dramatic build-up to the moving. Sometimes we moved because of evictions or job changes. Sometimes for good reasons, like a better housing opportunity or a step up in comfort, thanks to some connection that my charismatic parents had made. Either way, due to my frequently changing scenery and the undercurrent of chaos that poverty often creates, I developed somewhat of a photographic memory. It appears in all of its vivid detail right around the age of two. Bedrooms change, the color of the wallpaper, the smell of a hand-me-down couch, the hum of a rental unit's avocado-colored refrigerator. There's a washing machine that's frequently mistaken for an earthquake or a friendly neighbor with a horse called Pepper, someone who lets you hop their fence to retrieve your Frisbee. Different houses sometimes came with different pets and the loss or abandonments of the old ones at the old place. And of course, there were the feuds. I remember every drunk neighbor, the busybodies, the gossips, the liberals, and the divorcees. I can recall the name of just about every landlord who evicted us and my parents' list of grievances against them. I also remember every helping hand, every non-judgmental influence over our family and the impact of such relationships on our lifestyle. More than all this, I remember worrying quite a bit. Most people live in their childhood homes for a while, it softens the edges on the memories and gives them a comforting wash, a kind of afterglow set against routine and consistency. For kids like me, for whom every experience is set against a different visual and intense circumstance, it's really easy to remember the details of an early life. I see this now as a precious gift, but it isn't one I'm going to give my kids. They're going to have to get scrappy some other way because I don't have the stomach for it anymore. Burien is all concrete and strip malls now but parts of it used to feel like the country. The airport has since shut down most of the land our trailer was on when I got sick. I think it was in a fuel dump zone or some FAA law changed and it became uninhabitable somehow. My little brother Jay and I were Irish twins. He was irresistible with blonde hair and blue eyes, full of pure drama, charisma, and conviction from birth. At only 11 months and 27 days older than him, I thought he was adorable, and he was mine. He was tougher than me. My parents had to implore me to stand up for myself, physically with Jay, because while we didn't really fight in a mutual sense, he fought the hell out of me. I couldn't work out whether he was supposed to be my formidable foe or my protected baby brother. It's an odd age difference. I was getting ready to start kindergarten. My dad wanted me to be homeschooled, but he came up against too much resistance from the rest of the family. I understand both inclinations now, the one to keep your kid at home when they seem so small and underprepared, and the one that urges us to overcome all that and send him anyway. I was shy and quiet, but very clever. I was good at rhyming. I had an extensive vocabulary and had already dreamed up some songs. Smile at the sun, smile at the sun. Life is so much fun when you smile at the sun. I still hear the melodies. My parents had no experience with children, but they had been told by enough people that I was advanced. So when my grandmother on my dad's side heard from a neighbor about a program at the University of Washington for gifted children, she hipped my mom to it, and I was enrolled at the age of four. I have memories of wearing a lead jacket and playing with children's toys, presumably whilst being x-rayed. Now it seems dubious to say the least, but I'm going to chalk it up to the 80s. I had been a colicky baby with some weird infancy health issues that I had grown out of, but my mother had never grown out of her irrational tendency to worry about me. My dad was well aware of this and didn't attempt to hide his annoyance. Every sneeze or childish complaint would send my mother rushing to the phone to dial 2-4 nurse or poison control. My illness when it hit felt like an extra dreamy flu to me. Nausea and vomiting, but also a sense of euphoria that I can only imagine must be what morphine is like. My mother's first call was to my dad. They had a fight. 
Hello. Today, I'm going to show you how to get this audiobook for free in just a few minutes. In this video, I'll guide you step by step. It's really simple and fast. In just a few minutes, you'll be able to listen to your audiobook for free. So, let's get started. Here are the steps you need to follow. Click on the link below the video to access the audiobook page. I want to emphasize that the method I'm showing you works with any book from the Amazon audiobook catalog offered by Audible. Make sure the option Free with Trial is displayed on the page. Then, click on the Try Audible button. You will be redirected to the Amazon website. If you already have an Amazon account, log in. Otherwise, you can easily create an account. Now, if you don't have an Amazon account, here's how to create one. Click on the Create Your Amazon Account button at the bottom of the page. Fill in the fields of the form with your first name, last name, mobile phone number or email address, and password. Then click Continue to validate. You will receive a verification code at the email address you provided. Log in to that email account, copy the verification code, and paste it into the box requested by Amazon. Next, enter your phone number to receive a verification code via SMS. Insert this code into the box presented by Amazon and click the Create Your Amazon Account button. On the next page, Amazon will ask you to enter your credit card number. Don't worry, it won't be charged because it's the free trial period. If you decide to continue your subscription, you will be charged $14.95 per month after the free trial period. Click on Add Your Card. After adding your credit card, you will be redirected to this page asking for your personal information, such as first name, address, email, etc. Then click the Use This Address button. Once you have entered all the information requested by Amazon, you will finally arrive at this page. You will see that the book you have chosen is displayed. And all you have to do now is confirm it to listen to your audiobook. As you can see, the amount to be paid is $0. This first audiobook is completely free. Now click on the Try for Free button. Now your Audible account is created and you have access to your free audiobook. You can listen to the audiobook you chose directly on this Amazon page or on the Audible website. The most recent had been two years previously. I'd actually survive six months. I want to remind you once again that the method I've shown you here works with any book from the Amazon catalog, audiobooks offered by Audible. Now, all you need to do is go to the Audible website, use your Amazon information to log into your Audible account, email address and password, and once you're logged in, click on the library menu. There you will find your free book. And all you have to do is click Listen Now to start listening. I'm not ashamed to admit that I cried like a baby. You also have the option to download the Audible app, which will make it easier and faster to listen to the audiobooks in your library. From this point on, you have two choices. The first choice is to keep your Audible subscription and agree to be charged $14.95 per month. This will give you a monthly credit that you can use to listen to or download any audiobook of your choice, regardless of its price. If you want to enjoy one audiobook per month regardless of its price, simply make use of your subscription. The second choice is to cancel your Audible account before the end of the 30-day period. This way, you won't be charged $14.95, and you can keep access to your free audiobook indefinitely. To cancel your account, Go to your Audible account, hover over the menu where your first name is displayed, and click on the Account Details link. On the page that appears, click on the Cancel Membership link. Scroll down the page, then click on Continue to Cancel on the next page. Audible will ask you for the reason for your departure. You can provide the reason of your choice, and then at the bottom of the page, click the Continue Canceling button. In this step, Audible will make a final attempt to keep you as a customer by offering you several deals that are truly interesting for audiobook enthusiasts. You can choose one of these offers if you wish to continue the adventure with Audible. Otherwise, click on Confirm Cancellation. There you go. Your Audible subscription is cancelled, 
and you still have your free audiobook in your library without paying anything. Your credit card has not been charged. Take a look. Together, we will verify if the offered book is still available after canceling the subscription. To do this, click on the Library menu. I confirm that the book is still here, available in your account. You can listen to it whenever you want by clicking the Listen Now button and listen to it as many times as you wish. I was crying because I knew that I was condemned to be a smoker for life. Now, if you want to enjoy a free book and listen to it at any time, click on the link below this video and follow the steps I just described. Thanks to this, you can listen to your book for free anytime and as many times as you want in your Audible account.